What's a medical condition that sounds too insane to be true? Auto brewery syndrome. Acosaceramizes cerevisi. Basically carbs are turned into alcohol in your intestinal tract and you get drunk from eating them. Sounds good at first. But imagine never being able to eat carbs before going to work. Driving your car. Etc. It also isn't as good as it sounds. Instead of being perpetually drunk. It's more like feeling perpetually hungover. Yay. That wouldn't be pleasant at all. Undine's curse. Or congenital central hyperventilation syndrome. Basically. In the most severe cases. A genetic defect makes it so that you are born not capable of sensing when you need to breathe. Have to spend your whole life on a ventilator with a tracheostomy. Although some progress is being made with diaphragm pacing. I dated a guy with this syndrome. He only needed a ventilator when he slept. But he had to get a pacemaker when he was 21. Due to his heart overcompensating for the oxygen he was struggling to get. It was scary sometimes when we were together and he would start to fall asleep. Oh my I've never heard of this. So those with this syndrome have to always breathe manually. Exploding head syndrome is my favorite. I have this. It's ducking weird. I actually discovered I had this by reading a similar thread on Askredit a long time ago. I had asked a couple of friends about it before. And they all looked at me like I was ducking crazy. After reading it. I was thrilled that I wasn't going mad. And this is actually some weird condition. Also. It says most people that have it are 50 plus. But I've had it ever since I can remember. I've had the weirdest sounds exploding in my head. Usually it's just a bang. But I've had water droplets going from left to right. I've had cars. Trains. Airplanes. Symbols. Punts. Claps. Although I don't mind the condition too much. And it only happens like once every two weeks. It can be ducking annoying when I've been struggling for hours to fall asleep. Only to be on the verge of sleep and getting woken up by some insanely loud noise in my head. I have this as well. Just discovered in this thread it's a syndrome. It doesn't happen as often as yours. Seems to be related to being extremely tired and going into a deep sleep very fast. For me the sound hasn't changed much. A bomb or explosion. Alien hand syndrome. Arts is a rare neurological disorder that causes hand movement without a person being aware of what is happening or having control over the action. The afflicted person may sometimes reach for objects and manipulate them without wanting to do so. Even to the point of having to use the healthy hand to restrain the alien hand. Source. Medterms.com link. Like idle hands. Or Dr. Strange Love. Tourette's syndrome with coprolalia if you asked a 10 year old boy to come up with a disease. It would be this. The uncontrollable urge to utter obscene words or socially inappropriate remarks. My sister has Tourette's but without the swears inappropriate remarks. On one hand. I'm sure things are much easier that way. On the other. She used to get super pissed that people only knew it as the swearing disease and felt embarrassed because she just made noises. She has a minor case and medication gets rid of it. Thankfully. My mom's best friend's son has this. He's like a little brother to me. His doc says it's the worst case that he has ever seen. The kid takes it really well. Has a good sense of humor about it. Sometimes it can be really stressful for him though. Capra's delusion. A disorder which causes the sufferer to believe that someone they know has been replaced by an identical copy. My dad treated a woman who had this. She thought her entire family was replaced and they were spies. It's not as funny as it sounds. It was quite heartbreaking. She wouldn't speak to or acknowledge her children except to scream curses at them. What a horrible situation for those around her. Yeah that would really interfere with their espionage. Allergic to water. N Wikipedia org link. I have chronic idiopathic urticaria, so there's no real cause. I just get hives all the time for no reason. It's been going on since April, and seriously. Any kind of urticaria blows. Sometimes hot water makes my hives better. Sometimes it makes them way worse. Pressure almost always makes them worse, so no massages. 
No bath tubs or hot tubs with jets. And sometimes I get a lovely ring of hives around my waist if my jeans are a little tight. It's a terrible condition. How do they like? Not dehydrate? Fatal familial insomnia, guaranteed death through the inability to sleep. And lots of horrors along the way, that is. Hallucinations and madness. My doctor thought I was developing this in college when I was in my early 20s. Brain scans. Blood work. And a multitude of tests later. It turned out to be some type of random amazing hormone imbalance. Nothing would put me under. Not barbiturates. Not sedatives. I was awake for 9 days straight. I don't have the disease but it did provide some insight into the effects of sleep deprivation. I can tell you this. The disease is worse for those outside than the person suffering from it. After maybe 5 days you aren't really aware of what's happening around you. It doesn't actually hurt anymore and you no longer feel confused or frustrated. You'll lose the ability to understand exactly how jumbled your perception is and how confused your responses are. Granted. You're probably speaking nonsense in a normal voice and answering questions that were not asked. But to you just feel lightheaded and tired and slightly wrong. To everyone else around you however. You are a rambling mess lacking any normal reaction or self-preservation. Shrug. Ro. This is really interesting. I'm really sorry about your experience though. Which hormone S was were out of balance? What did the doctors do to even the balance out? Can you tell me more about how people were perceiving you? More details of how you felt throughout the process? When did you realize you had to seek medical attention? Sorry that I'm being nosy. I just find this extremely interesting. And to stumble over someone who has these experiences is gold to me. Eilers Danlos Syndrome. Specifically type 3. Hypermobility. It's genetic. And caused by collagen deficiencies. It makes you super flexible. To the point where your muscles can't keep your joints in place. This is the reason I can lick my elbow. I just slip my shoulder slightly out of place. At one point. I stopped shutting the door to my bedroom because I couldn't grip the doorknob due to my fingers slipping out of place. I kept getting stuck in my room. It can be very painful. And also has other disorders diseases associated with it. Usually people with this tend to have a lot of dislocations and subluxations. Edit. The Wikipedia page. For anyone that's curious. Edit edit. For anyone struggling with this or who wants to know more. There is r slash alerts downless. If I spelled it right. I just found out about EDS. And it's milder cousin. Benign joint hypermobility. Because of the link to anxiety disorders. Very interesting how some completely unrelated seeming things may have the same underlying cause. There was a guy who didn't ask me anything a while back who was allergic to his own semen. No. He didn't drink it. If he ejaculated at all. He went through several weeks of pain. The ultimate no fapper. That poor soul. Seeing sounds as colors. Ha. Huh. I have full spectrum synesthesia. Meaning every one of my senses crosses over into every other one. I taste colors. See sounds. Hear physical sensations. And so on. There are even a few that I can't easily explain. But that typically involve words like orientation. Time. Or balance. One of the things that I've noticed in having the condition is that quite a few people claim to be the same way. Many of them are even telling the truth. To some extent. Allegedly. As many as 1 in 2000 people associate letters or numbers with specific colors. On the other hand. There are also those folks who will look at you like you're crazy. I really like this source. I might say. But I feel like the ending notes are a bit sharp. Oh. Like. Too sour? The response might be. I'd try to explain. No. Not sour. Exactly. Sharp. It's just slightly out of tune. You're not making any sense. Okay. I'd continue. Well. When you first take a bite. You get that initial swell of baritone and tenor in harmony. Like the smell of cedar. It's good. But then it gets too thin. And that greenish yellow color starts to glow around it. It needs a dark. 
smooth red with a snap to balance it out. Sigh. Add some cinnamon. Trust me. I would love to have this for a day. I just don't know if I could put up with it my whole life. Tiguatara is an aerotoxin found in some fish that eat toxic algae blooms. You can get it if you cut yourself cleaning fish. Edit. Or if a fish containing the toxin isn't cooked properly. There is no way to remove the toxins or know if a fish has it. Avoiding predatory reef fish is your best option. One of the symptoms is your sense of temperature is reversed. Like you could drink a glass of ice water and it would feel like you poured boiling water in your mouth. Or touch a hot stove and feel like you are touching dry ice. Good thing I don't like fish. What if you touch lukewarm water? The one that turns your body to bone. I couldn't imagine having my muscles slowly solidify. Sorry for mobile link. NM Wikipedia org link. I saw a documentary about this. It's so scary. When the doctors notice that it's happening to you. They'll recommend you get into comfortable position, usually sitting, because your body will slowly be locked in that position for the rest of your life. I'd kill myself while my arms still worked. Edited. For grammar. I knew a doctor who had constant, unrelenting hiccups. Every sentence I ever heard her omit was punctuated by hiccups. She, hic, sounded completely, hic, miserable. Eventually the constant pressure from the hiccups caused bleeds in her eyes and she started going blind. After that, they tried to install some kind of pacemaker in her brain to manage the hiccups. But it didn't work. I'm not sure what happened to her in the end. But she became so disabled she could no longer work. I think it may have ended up killing her. Emma's spatial neglect makes no sense. Short version. The brain only recognizes usually only the right side of your body. Of things etc. The left side is neglected. If asked to draw a circle patients will draw half a circle and end it with a straight line up the middle. And they are completely unaware of their distorted perception. I learned about this in speech pathology for whatever reason. Give a patient a plate of food. They will eat exactly one half cut down the middle. Very weird mental illness. Couldn't really believe it until I saw video of it. My aunt had a stroke a few years ago. And I think she suffered from something similar to this. If asked to number a clock. She would crowd all the number on the right side. If she set the table. She would only set half of it. There were other examples. But these are the ones I recall right now. I'd like to add that she's doing much better now. Prosopagnosia the inability to recognize his faces. I think I might have this. I should figure that out. I normally recognize people I don't know well by their hair. And if I see them outside of where I met them I very rarely recognize them. I can't remember what people I do recognize look like until I see them. Like right now I have no clue what my boyfriend looks like. And I can only explain what my mom and other family members look like because I would spend time analyzing their faces. Things like she has a long nose with a bump in it. It's not that rare. Most people with mild forms just learn to compensate it and won't get diagnosed. I totally know what you described. It can get really awkward in everyday situations. Williams Syndrome. It's a neurodevelopmentally disease caused by a chromosomal abnormality that causes a person to have elf-like facial features, think Santa's elves. Not Legolas, but more importantly they have highly developed language skills and cheerful demeanors. NM Wikipedia org link. Isn't there a theory that the usual depiction of an elf is because of Williams syndrome? It came first and the face personality consistency got noticed? I've met a couple such people. And having done so I'm not sure I'd classify this a disease so much as a tray. Well. Maybe. Maybe not. Just remembered the shortened lifespan. But those folks were as cheerful as anyone I've ever met. And had the souls of poets. Polyquinic theosis. What happens if your skin was rock hard and scale like? Instead of soft and supple? Nightmares. Edit. To everyone who google searched it. I told you IT was nightmares. Warning. Do not look this up on Google image search. Had a friend look this up last night. He clicked on Google images. 
saw what it was. Then immediately dropped his phone as if it bit him with a horrified expression on his face. Witzel such which is characterized by making bad jokes and puns. Which one then laughs at continuously. So. Dad? I think my dad has this. Cold to carrier. My son has this. Basically. He's allergic to cold. In fact. Any rapid temperature change causes him to go into anaphylactic shock. For instance. We first discovered this when he was an infant. If his face was exposed to cold air. Like in the winter. His whole face turned into a leathery. Old man like consistency as it swelled up and became wrinkled. It faded when we got him in warm air after about half an hour. One bad episode left burst blood vessels in his face for weeks. When he was a little kid. No one believed us. They gave us that smarmy knowing grin of first parents and made up disease. Everyone is allergic to cold. Silly. When he was 6. One of our relatives let him play with the hose one cold morning. And he exploded with red hives. He looked like he'd been spattered with hot grease. When he was 8. A kid threw a snowball in his face. And his face swelled up so bad. The kid, who was 11, was detained by police and social workers because there's no way a snowball could do that kind of damage. They called the hospital and an ambulance came because my son couldn't breathe. Parent vs parent fun ensued when my son's face got back to normal indoors. And the parents accused us of making our kid dramatic. But the EMTs swore that the EP pen saved him. When he was a teenager. He spent too much time in the hot tub and then dove into a swimming pool and went into anaphylactic shock. He was temporarily blind and had to be in the ambulance for a while before they let him go. It's better now that he is an adult. But when people don't believe him. He just puts an ice cube on his skin to make the magic happen. Basically any urti carrier sucks. Because no matter how you try to explain it you end up sounding stupid. Hey man you should come play basketball with us. No. I'm good. Thanks though. Man. Come on they're only playing to 20 points. It'll be fun. I uh, I'm good. Really. And right about here is where I have to describe Cholinergic urti carrier. Which is being allergic to your own sweat. It's awkward and mildly painful. And I really don't feel like being active and sweaty and bumpy and bright red. Sorry for being weird. Best comment of the day. I used to think that everybody had two eyes, but only used one turns out I'm legally blind in my left eye lol.